Well, everyone, it's, it's just always tremendous to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, this first song, we've done it a few times. It may not be that familiar with to you. Uh, Betty and I are going to lead us out in it and join in if you feel like you know it well enough. Even if you don't know it, the words are going to be there. It's a song called 10,000 Reasons. And um, we actually modified the original service that we had planned but to include this song because it fits really well with today's message. And so, uh, obviously the words are similar to what we sang in Sunday school, but here we go. Bless the Lord, oh my soul.
assailed me. The cords of Sheol entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress I called upon the Lord. To my God I cried for help. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Then the earth reeled and rocked, the foundations also of the mountains trembled and quaked because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils, devouring fire from his mouth. Glowing coals flamed forth from him. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick and darkness was under his feet. He rode on cherub and flew. He came swiftly on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him, thick clouds dark with water. Out of the brightness before him, hailstones and coals of fire broke through his clouds. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. And he sent out his arrows and scattered them. He flashed forth lightning and routed them. Then the channels of the sea were seen, and the foundations of the world were laid bare. 
at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He sent from on high, he took me. He drew me out of many waters. He rescued me from my strong enemy and those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Obviously, we're going to talk a little bit about David, King David. And I've called this sermon the wake up call. And the reason that came into mind, because on December 7th, 1941, America got the wake-up call of its life. We all know about the bombing of Pearl Harbor, and this devastating, and the Japanese admirals and generals thought that they could debilitate the American fleet enough to give them time to really wreak havoc in the world. And of course, we know they did wreak a lot of havoc across the world. I've watched probably 15 or 20 World War II videos in the last couple of weeks. And the reason the title of this concept today is Christian Resilience is the theme. But what struck me again and again is it talked about island after island after island and one of those islands my father was wounded on, Saipan. At the thousands of young soldiers that were killed, but they never quit. They doctored the wounded. They saved many civilians who were trying to commit suicide, especially on Saipan. That was a whole, there was 39,000 uh, indigenous people who lived there, not counting the soldiers. And the thing that I've heard that sheep are Not very self-sufficient. Kind of, it's interesting to me, after you really study sheep, that God calls us the sheep. Sheep cannot find water on their own. They have to be led to water. And if the water's running, they won't drink it. It has to be still. Remember the third, 23rd song? They'll leave me beside still water. They had to be carefully guarded. They had to be put away at night or they would just wander. And sometimes they would wander anyway. And the shepherd had to go get them. That, remember the, my rod and my staff, they comfort me. Sometimes it's the rod on the head, and sometimes it's the gentle pull of the staff to pull them back into the fold or back into the crowd. But he learned about sheep and how to deal with sheep, and not that different from people a lot of times. Boy, did he ever learn to use a sling. And then with his bare hands, he killed a lion. Sometimes I almost ask you to forgive me for the alliteration, but he had the sheep, then he had the sling, and then he learned strings. He played the harp. Baby's got a degree in music therapy, and they say David was the first music therapist, and he was calming the spirit of Saul with his harp playing. 
He also learned to sing. He wrote a lot of songs. We have a lot of them in the book of Psalms. The one, Psalm 18, that Dom read a portion of is very descriptive of David's relationship to God. But one of the things he learned with all that alone time is that he figured out that that was a really good time to spend with God, talking to God, writing songs to God. There's no telling uh, how many times he sang this particular song, and it's 50 verses long. I don't think it would have made the top 20. And he learned lots of lessons because he knew God's word. I think it's really neat that when it came time to deal with Goliath, you remember what David said? This is my paraphrase. Who is this barbarian that would defy the armies of the living God? He's a 15-year-old kid teaching Saul and the soldiers a lesson. He wasn't very big. He wasn't grown yet because he couldn't even wear the armor they tried to put on him. What did he fall back on? The skills that he had developed out in the field. took that sling, took, picked up five stones, because I guess the rumor was that Goliath had five or four brothers. But he only needed one. And he wasn't off the mark a bit. But out between the eyes, Goliath fell thunderously. He was huge. Probably nine feet tall or something. You know, the whole point of Goliath is a God thing. Because when God is in control, and he's in control of you, you're going to make the right decision. He just went down there, slung the rock, cut off his head, that made it pretty fine. Wasn't any doubt who was the winner. The winner was God. David was dependent on God for everything. Through life, he learned the importance of human relationships. Remember that incredible relationship he and Jonathan had? They were even blood brothers. And then, you think David was fearful because he ran from Saul for a long time. David was not given to happenstance. He took the bull by the horns and he ran like a scalded dog. He got smart. Wasn't particularly spiritual, but it was because it was the wise thing to do. You don't stand around and he also knew that you don't take the life of the king. So he ran from Saul. There was even one time when Saul was in a cave going to the bathroom. David slipped up behind him and cut off part of his cloak. But Paul, Saul didn't even know he was there. Could have easily killed him. But he didn't. He learned integrity from God. He learned that it was God's job to take care of Saul. 
But in Psalm 18, <clears throat> here are some of the things that stood out to me uh, with David describing God. You should, you should go home and read the whole chapter. It's pretty incredible. We may even pick some of it up again next week. Toying with that idea. But he said, you're my comfort. You're my strength. You're my refuge. We understand comfort and strength. Refuge, not something we think of a lot today about taking refuge. We see refugees as we look at TV and we look at other countries and people that have been displaced. But a refuge is a place you go where the trouble isn't. Maybe a hiding place. David's case, maybe a cave. I love the fact that he called God a fortress. Now, a fortress is a place that has built for the purpose of withstanding an attack. Where was that place? God. God was the fortress. And he called him ruler. Understanding that God was at the top of the authority chain. And he says, he delivered me from my enemies. I love the fact that he called him the horn of salvation. The horn was used in a couple of ways. First of all, they used the horn as a trumpet. To understand it, to let, maybe let the enemy know that they were surrounded or we're here, we're, we're standing tall, we're just where we are. Many uses of that in the scripture. But the horn of salvation. You remember at Thanksgiving, we see a lot of pictures of the horn of plenty. The basket-like horn that's full of provisions. The horn of salvation. The salvation that provides everything I need. He called him the Lord is my stronghold. That is where I am when I have nothing else. The Lord is the stronghold. The stronghold is a place where you're protected. It's a place where maybe you pre-stored some provisions and you know to go back to it because it's a stash of provisions that you're going to need. Those are the different description things that he talked, those descriptive words that he used about God, but listen to the actions that he took regarding God. My favorite and if you look through scripture, the children of Israel did this many times. But he said, I cried out to God. Cried out shows desperation. Shows a, a, a final effort of, oh my, God is the only one that can take care of me. I cried out to God. I remember another king. I always laugh when I read it. Because he had been taken captive by 
the army of Assyria. And, and he's riding in an ox cart on the bumpy road with a ring in his nose tied off to the side of the ox cart. And the Bible says, in his distress, he cried out to God. That's a really good time to cry out to God. David did that a lot. Life brings lots of distress. Life brings lots of things. And this is what I want us to learn today from David. All of the things that David describes and the things he went through, are, it's just life. It's David's life. Now, maybe we don't have enemies hunting us that are wanting to take our life. Sometimes when we watch the news, we may wonder about that. But then he said, I cried out to God, but then he said, and he heard me. My words came to his ears. God's there, just call out. And then I love this. He kept my lamp burning. My need was provided my spirit to go on and keep moving forward never went out. Then he said some things we, we all know that's true, but I love the fact that David said it in this song. He said he's perfect. And his word is flawless. Not only is he perfect, his word is perfect. That's why David learned to lean on the word of God as he went through his life. He's just talking about the things that he had learned, even quoting prophecies and history from the Old Testament. And then he says, this is a statement to everyone, he shields all who will take refuge in him. And he says the most obvious, he is God. And then he says, who is God but the Lord? <coughs> and he says he keeps me secure. There's a lot of talk about security, cybersecurity, security in your phone and your computer and David didn't have to worry about any of that, but he still had security issues that were taken care of. He keeps me secure. And this one I particularly like, especially as I get older, I don't, I'm still pretty ambulatory, but I need a wide path and not many obstacles in it. I was walking to my deer blind the other morning and I realized how many lumps and bumps were in that roadway that I was walking down in the dark with a little bitty flashlight. But he said he gives me, get this, a wide path. We don't know which way to go and where to turn and what decision or is the wisest thing to do next. Listen, the Lord will tell you which way to go and where the best path is. Just like he did David. I think some other key elements here to look at would be the fact that David in this passage of scripture was bluntly honest. I mean, it is raw. He did not hide his feelings. I don't think he used the word, but he certainly implied that he was terrified. He didn't have any way to place to turn. He was hopeless. He was helpless. He had no way to resolve the issues that were there, but God took care of it. He 
said he was overwhelmed. The lesson from all of this so far is there's only one resource. Now we know about resources and we need to re re especially living out in the country like we do, we stock quite a lots of canned goods and different things, freezer full of meat or something or other food and so that we don't have to run to town every five minutes for a loaf of bread or a gallon of milk. But there's one resource that's always dependable and that's God. David realized he was the resource for all of these various needs that he's explained that God was the answer. So when you come to your end of your rope, God's there. When the enemy has you in a corner, keep looking because there's a door. When the circumstances look like there's a wall, look harder because there's either a window or a ladder. When your health threatens you, he's the only source of wisdom. He's the only source of comfort. And if death is imminent, he's present to give you peace and a perfect place to wait for you. God's got it all covered. I think the first time I ever heard this passage quoted was my father, Jeremiah 33 3. Anybody else want to quote it? David, you're smiling. You still know it. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you never even thought of. That's why David said, I cried to the Lord. I cried out to the Lord and he heard. You can always be guaranteed that the Lord will hear your prayer. Whether it's a prayer of desperation or not, and of course a lot of the circumstances that David was in through this situation was very desperate. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you things that you never dreamed were possible. That's the Bob paraphrase. So, Call out to God when your health is failing, humbly. Have some sweet time. When your enemies attack. We might not have the same kind of enemies David had, but we all have one we know is out there to get us. Bible says he roams the earth to and fro looking for whoever he can devour. If we look around us, we see the effects of people who have succumbed to the wiles and lies of Satan. He's the enemy when it's all said and done. When the finances overwhelm you, Call out to God. When life seems absolutely impossible, call out to God. And most of all, when God seems far away. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call on me. And I will answer show you fantastic, seemingly impossible 
Your greatest need, God has got you covered. The greatest need for all of us is to know Jesus as our personal Savior. From the very beginning of creation, Jesus was the plan. You heard me say that a couple of weeks ago. Jesus was always the plan. If you're listening and watching today, please know that Jesus is waiting for you to pick up the phone and give him a call. All you really need to say, once you realize that you're a sinner and you need a Savior, just call out to God. My favorite phrase of a sinner in the scripture <coughs> is the tax collector, publican that everybody despised. Because he knew that he was a thief, among other things. And what did he say standing in the synagogue over in the corner all by himself? Beating his chest, the Bible says. And saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's the most important words you can ever say to God. Do that today. Pray to him. Ask him for his forgiveness. He stands ready to forgive you right this. You can even just say, Jesus, save me. You're going to have to know all that there is about being a Christian or knowing Jesus. Just call out to him. Remember David said, I cried out to God and he answered me. If you cry out to God for salvation, he will give it to you. He stands ready to bring you in to his kingdom. Pray to him. Heavenly Father, thank you for David and his life and these lessons that we can learn from him. I pray, Lord, that you would keep us resilient as a Christian because we keep leaning on you and calling out to you. And we know when we call out to you, you always answer always provide so today Lord give salvation to those who call upon you and give us peace and comfort in our heart knowing that you got this. And Jesus, it's in your mighty, holy, magnificent, stupendous, exciting, incredible name that we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me as we sing together? Remember the door of the church is always open. If the Lord is speaking to your heart about church membership, you need to step out and do that today. We welcome you with open arms. Your eyes upon Jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strange to in the light of
Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the message that we just heard. Just uh, help us, Lord, that we do things that please you and just guide us and direct us as we enter this new week and help us, Lord, to be kind and forgiving and just, uh, Lord, we turn to you to send moisture up on our land and, Lord, just thank you for blessing us and just thank you for loving us. For we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen.